Hello, boys and girls. Welcome to Kids Connection. My name is Audrey Zorik, director of Kids Connection right here at Vallejo Drive Church, a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God through Bible stories, fun songs, and exciting activities. Today, I'm going to be playing or making an experiment with you guys, and I want to see who is up for that. I invite you guys to do it at home too. So go ahead and grab a clear cup, okay? Grab some water, and we're gonna be doing an experiment in just a little bit. But for now, I wanna welcome everyone to our Kids Connection program. If this is your first time, we wanna welcome you and invite you to come back each and every Sabbath for a new Kids Connection program. And if you are a regular, welcome back kids. Always good to have you here. I am super excited because last week we had our first online live service. We're going to have the same program or similar, actually a little bit different, but we are going to have this program on the first Sabbath of every month. Our next program is going to be on December, December 5th. We are going to see you on our Zoom meeting Kids Connection Live program. Welcome everyone. I am so happy that today is Sabbath. I am happy that you guys join us and let us know how you how you're doing. Send us an email, VD for Vallejo Drive, Kids Connection at gmail.com. Now you notice something different here. Remember last week I had a big tree here? Well, I received a couple notice of uh, kids that sent us a notice and they wanted that leaf placed on our tree. However, Today we had a little issue uh, and we had to remove the panels and work behind the panels. There was something happening here and Kids Connection. So we had to take the tree down. But I promise you that next week we're going to have the tree up and we're going to have all you guys, all the leaves that you guys are thankful for. Keep sending them to us, okay? Send them to me by email, give me a call or send me a text message or have mom or dad contact me and I will put your name on that little leaf and the reason why you are thankful. And November is a thankful month. So let's get thankful. Let's give thanks to God for everything that we have, right? What are you thankful for? I'll be waiting for your message. Okay, so now I'm going to invite all the boys and girls to start our program singing our song of the day. And today's song of the day is There's Power in the Blood. Let's sing it together and I'll explain you all why we are singing this song today later in the program. Let's sing our song of the day.
There's power in the blood of the Lamb. Who is the Lamb? Jesus is the Lamb. There's power in Jesus. So let's go ahead and close our eyes, bow our heads, so we can talk to Jesus now, okay? Dear Jesus, thank you for this Kids Connection program that we are starting now. We ask that you be with each boy and girl and with all the teachers that are participating. And may we learn today a little bit more about you and about your love and how to get connected to you each and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Great, kids. Thank you so much for praying with us, for singing with us. Now we're going to listen to our missionary story. But I have a question for you. Do you know how much 30 is? Yes. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way to 30, right? Well, let me explain how much a number 30 is. Some of you are 10 years old. If you are 10, 30 means three times your age. If you're five, that means six times more your age. That's a lot of numbers, right? Well, our story today in our missionary story happens and started happening 30 years ago. So now I'm going to invite you guys to pay attention on what started 30 years ago and what is still happening today. Let's watch our missionary story. Thirty years ago, the Seventh-day Adventist Church embarked on a bold new mission focus that would totally change the face of the church. Church leaders identified key areas where the mission was struggling. Although the church was growing rapidly in certain parts of the world, many areas and people groups remained totally unreached. The church would continue working in areas where it was doing well. But something needed to change if we were to be faithful to the Great Commission to go to all peoples. At the General Conference session in 1990, delegates voted the Global Strategy document and Global Mission became an urgent new mission focus. There were two key objectives. One, to alert church members to the large number of unreached people groups and two, to plant new groups of believers among those groups. Since 1990, the Seventh-day Adventist Church has nearly quadrupled in size. Millions of new believers have found life in Jesus and have joined the Adventist family. They've come from new territories, new people groups, different cultures. They've brought joy to heaven and strength to God's church. We praise God for the thousands of new groups of believers that have been planted. And yet, we're still here. Mothers still sit and beg beside busy city streets. Many still wake each morning in fear of the spirit world. Millions in the 1040 window have never even heard of the name Jesus. Only one third of the people on earth are Christian. Two thirds follow other world religions. And a growing number claim no religion at all. And still there are cities of more than one million people with no recorded visit by even one Seventh-day Adventist. We so long for Jesus to come. That's why Global Mission continues to focus on unreached people in the 1040 window, the cities, in the secular postmodern West. Global Mission sends out thousands of Global Mission pioneers to start new groups of believers among the unreached. That's why it supports tent makers in the world's most challenging regions. And that's why Global Mission is helping to start hundreds of urban centers of influence in cities across the globe. Today, six global mission centers focus on the most effective ways to share the good news with people from non-Christian backgrounds. These centers find the best ways to build bridges of understanding and help field test resource materials, methods and models. Their goal is to remove barriers that make it difficult for people to understand and accept the gospel. We praise God for the millions who have found hope and peace in Jesus since global mission began. But we need more global mission pioneers. We need more urban centers of influence. 
and we need more prayer. Thirty years ago, Adventist church leaders cast a bold vision for mission. That vision still burns strong. To reach unreached people, to reach teeming cities, to reach those who feel no need of religion. Today, we still need people to answer the call to mission, to reach the unreached with hope, to share the good news about Jesus. We need people who will answer the call that still echoes after 30 years. We need people who will say, I will go. Now it's your turn to ask mom and dad to help the missionaries. And there are several ways that we can help global mission to spread the love of God in those countries that people have not yet heard about Jesus. A few ways to do it is, number one, we can help with our prayers. Number two, we can actually be a missionary and go all the way out there and, and work for global mission and tell Jesus, tell people about Jesus. And number three, we can send them our offerings. So now you ask mom and dad to click on the offering link above the video on our website, graceunconditional.com forward slash kids connection and donate to the missionaries. There, you can also donate to our Kids Connection program, to our church ministries, to our church budget, but don't forget to ask mom and dad to go out there and donate with their credit card, okay? Now it comes to the part of our program where I'm gonna have an experiment with you. Remember earlier that I told you to get a cup? Well, I have two cups here, but I want you to go ahead Grab that cup right now if you want, or you can also do this experiment later, okay? I wanna see what you have to say about this. I have water here. The bottle looks blue, but there's actually pure water inside and it's drinking water. I love water, love water is it, it, so good. So watch this. Here comes the first cup of water. Look at that, nice and clean, pure water. And here is the other, here's the other water. Oh, this is so good. I, I got thirsty already. So what I want you guys to do either now or later is to go ahead and fill one cup of water, okay? Drinking water. And I'm gonna use two as an example now, but I want you to do it with one later, or you can use two if you want. You can play that with the grown up if you wanted to, okay? So just ask them what they would do, just like I'm gonna ask you now. So here I have two clean glasses of water. They look great. And uh, I'm thirsty. I'm gonna drink some water. But wait a second. Before I drink some water, let me uh, let me do something here real quick. There, there, there's something else here that I wanna add, not just water. Um, let's see if you guys... Okay, here we go. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of, uh, yep. Okay, uh, just before coming in here, all right, there you go. So I, I just add a, a little bit of uh, uh, dirt and grass and rocks and bugs and worms um, that were outside, okay? Uh, just before coming in here, so now, <laughs> let me ask you something, which, cup would you rather drink from? Nice and clear, pure water or this muddy, dirty, yucky water? Ugh. Which one would you rather drink from, kids? This water is pure clean, purified. This water is no longer clean. Ask a grown-up which one they rather drink from. I rather drink from this one. This one much better because it's a pure water. Ah. Yummy good water. Now, what does this have 
to do with what we are doing, what we are going to listen in our story today. Well, kids, today's story is about a people, a people that weren't pure anymore. Paul's job was to help the people, this people, to get clean from their sins. They're, they were doing something wrong. And Paul was the one that God assigned to go and help the people to turn away from their unpure lives, their lives, filthy lives, and to be pure again like the clean water. We're going to listen to in our story today. But you know, kids, you know how we can get our lives to get the water clear. We have to go through a purification filtration process to get the water clean again. How do we get our lives clean from filthy to clean again? You know how we do it? The blood of Jesus. And we are going to sing our song of the day one more time. There's power, power in the blood of the Lamb. I loved it. I was I finished drinking my water and I sang the song There's Power in the Blood of the Lamb with you guys. So I hope you enjoyed singing the song with us today. It go and, and do the doing the experiment at home. Uh, go ahead and do that with the grown up and see what they say. And then you guys explain that the purification and what is pure and about the story that you're gonna hear today. Okay? Now we're gonna close our program with a prayer. Let's go ahead and bow our heads so we can talk to Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you so much because your blood purifies us. Your blood cleans us from the inside. Help us to learn in the story today how the people were turned away or how Paul, what Paul had to do to turn people from their wrong, from the wrong things they were doing in life and help us to learn that so we can be better kids, be um, uh, better moms and dads and grown-ups so we can all go to heaven one day and uh, spend eternal life with you where there's not going to be any more sins, no more stain, and uh, we are going to live with you forever. Help us to um, pay attention to our story today and uh, thank you so much for being with us and accepting our worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Alrighty, boys and girls. So now we've come to an end, to the end of another Kids Connection program. However, now it's time for you to sit tight and listen to your teacher's story. And let's hear the story about Paul. Don't forget, mom and dad, we have Parents Connection this afternoon. So go over there, tell mom and dad or the grown-up that you are with, whoever you're with, and say, listen, Mr. Zorik said there is a program this afternoon, Parents Connection at 2 30. Now, this program is not only for parents, it's for grown-ups, and we get to study the Bible, and guess what we're going to study? We're going to study the story of Paul, and how the people were trying to get clean, and how what he did to help the people turn away from their stains, just like you. It's the same story. So the parents are going to listen to that story this afternoon, okay? Kids, send us that email. Keep sending those messages. What you are thankful for. We're going to back have our tree back next week, and we're going to uh, uh, start putting all those leaves up of uh, for your kids. Oh, by the way, kid, remember kid was in our program last week. He wrote me a message, and he wrote the things that he is thankful for. I have it written down, and I'm gonna put kid. Um, kids reasons why he's thankful on our tree not only kid but Johnny too you remember Johnny Johnny was with us on our live program Johnny is also thankful and I'm gonna put his the reasons why he's thankful for go ahead and send us that note let me know what you're thankful for we're going to fill our trees with our tree with leaves of thankfulness it's going to be our thankful uh, tree that we're gonna put it up kids I loved having you with us in our Kids Connection program today. I hope you had fun with our experiment. I invite you to come back next week for another program. Until then, kids, I love you. I miss you. Stay safe. I will see you next week. Bye-bye, kids. Bye. Hi. Good morning, kids. How are you? Welcome to our primary classroom. It's so nice to have you here today. I'm happy that you were able to join us. I am teacher Kathleen and I am one of the teachers for the primary department. Thank you very much for coming this morning. Let's start with a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we are grateful for the many blessings that you give us. Thank you for the wonderful gifts you show us every day that are so we are so undeserving to receive thank you god for your love and thank you for your care in jesus name we pray amen well i am very happy that you guys are with us today we had a great time last week and i enjoyed seeing each one of you last week so thank you very much for coming in today and we're going to continue the story of paul remember the city we were studying corinth well, the story of today is also based on 1 Corinthians, and we're going to see some other things that were happening in that church. Paul was very worried about the church in Corinth because last week they couldn't get together. Remember, unity through Christ. Paul wanted them to have them. They wanted Paul wanted them to have unity through Christ. And he wrote a letter to express his feelings and tell, told them, you know what? You guys should just be rejoicing and spreading out the word with others. That God loves you. That Jesus came to save us. That is the good news that go out and express it. Express it out. Go out and tell out to everyone that Jesus went to heaven. That is a gift that he gave us, but it's not for us to keep, but to share. So this week, we have a different situation going on. Paul discovered that there was a person that had committed sin, but that person probably was not showing any remorse. I want you to think about a policeman, you know? Whenever we see a policeman, policeman, have you ever had the feeling like, oh, don't move, he's looking at us. Sometimes when I'm driving and I see the police car, I immediately see the speed that, I am, that I'm driving at. I immediately check and make sure that everyone had their seat belts buckled up and you, you get kind of nervous because that you know that they could probably pull you over or probably you could be doing something wrong. 
Has it ever happened to you guys that you're in a different situation and you're encountering someone with authority and you get a little bit nervous? What happens when someone walks to us and tells us, you know what you're doing is wrong? Mm, do we always take it in a positive way or sometimes we don't like to receive those kind of news? What happens when a teacher tells us, when our parents tells us, you know, you're not acting the correct way, you should not be doing that. Do we say, you know what, you're right, I shouldn't be doing that, I am sorry, and I'm gonna try my best not to do it again. You know, as humans, we make mistakes, and it's normal, everyone makes mistakes, but the problem is, is not acknowledging that we are in an error and not correct our ways. And that is the problem. When we make a mistake, we can always go to God and say, you know, God, I know I did this and then my parents told me and I was able to see it clearly that I was not acting correctly. Please, please forgive me. In that moment, psh, everything goes away and next day it starts, it's a new fresh start. So Paul here was saying, you know, this person doesn't want to change his ways, so we're going to cut him out. What does that mean? Can we go to the Bible? Let's go to the Bible and find 1 Corinthians. Let's see, we're going to start 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, verse 3. And Paul is writing, For my part, even though I am not physically present, I am with you in spirit. Remember, he was writing a letter to them. As one who is present with you in this way, I have already passed judgment in the name of our Lord Jesus in the one who has been doing this. So when you were assembled and I am with you in spirit, meaning when you're reading this letter, I'm going to be with you, and the power of our Lord Jesus is present, hand this man over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh so that his spirit may be saved on the day of the Lord. You know, it can be a little confusing what Paul was saying there. Why is he being so harsh? Was he actually judging sin? Or what was he actually judging the person? Oh, so that means that people are not bad. What is bad is sin. You know, this world has mixed things up and said, you know what? That person is a wrong person and that person can never change. Whenever someone tells us something, they tell you, you're a bad person. Why did you do that? And you know, they're two separate things. Humans are not bad. It's sin that corrupts the soul. So what happens when we take away the sin and replace it with God's love? We're capable of loving and being a new person. Humans are capable of many different things. So when our parents tell us, you know what, what you're doing is incorrect, then you start thinking, I'm such a bad person, I'm never gonna get it right. I can't do this anymore. I am a terrible, terrible person. Well, let me tell you something. You are not a terrible person because you are a son and a daughter of God. And God made you wonderfully. And God gave you many gifts. And the problem is that we make mistakes not because there is something wrong with us, but because Sin captures our lives. But the moment we recognize that sin is causing destruction in our lives, we can remove sin right away and say, God, remove this piece of me because I don't like that to be part of my life. You are sin. You are not welcome in my life. Can you take sin away from your life? Let's take it out of our lives. I don't want to, I don't want to live with this, you know. And God, can you give us the love we need? God, can you give us the peace we need? Can you put in our minds, thoughts, 
for good and not for evil? Yes, God is capable of doing all that. You know, Paul, before he was a Christian, he was not a nice person. He used to persecute uh, Christians. And you know, the only way he could behave, uh, change his behavior, it's because he said, God, remove that sin from me. You know, I'm not a slave of sin anymore. I recognize my mistake. I take it out and I bring your love to my life. You are a wonderful person. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And God is with you. So if sometimes we feel that someone is trying to correct us, for example, our parents, think about it. Do I need to take away the sin away from my life and bring God back to my life? Are my parents telling me something that I should probably change? What about lying? Is lying correct? But the problem is when we do not acknowledge and in this story, that's what it was happening. That person was not acknowledging that it was in a mistake and he did not, or she, um, it says a man, he never acknowledged that he wanted to change his way. So Paul is saying, you know, let's take away sin out. Let's remove the sin. Let's see if we can do something. And he was trying to shake church a little bit by doing this what a, why don't we read colossians let's try to read colossians can you find where colossians is we're going to read colossians chapter 3 verse 17 colossians 3 17 and this is what it says. And whatever you do, whatever you do means anything. Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. You know, through him is that we can remove all our sinful ways. Anything that we do not like about ourselves, we could just remove that sinful th thoughts. We all have sinful thoughts. We all have done something that we shouldn't. We all have taken mistakes. We all have done the wrong things. And someone with authority had to tell us, you're not doing the right thing. That is something normal. But when God comes to the equation, he removes something from us and replaces it with, with love and kindness and all the gifts of the Spirit. You know, I hope that this week you can do a little prayer in the morning and say, you know, God, today I want to obey you. I'm going to listen through authority, through my parents, to my teachers, I'm going to listen and see if there is something that it's not leading me to a right way. And I want to replace that sin and replace it with your love. Can we pray about that this week? I hope you guys can do that. And read this book, the, the, the book of 1 Corinthians. You're going to see the story of what uh, the church in Corinth was going by, and we're going to keep on reading Paul's letters to the church in Corinth. I hope you guys liked the lesson today. Um, please come back next week as we're going to have another special program for you guys. Take care, enjoy, and I'm glad that you were able to be with us. Let's have a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, thank you very much for this, kids. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your love. Thank you because you remove sin from our lives and put love instead of hate. Thank you very much for that, God. And please bless each of the kids that is watching this morning. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 
Bye kids. I hope you enjoy your lesson. Study your lesson this week and have a word of prayer with God every morning. Goodbye.